Hello, it's me behind George. This is my uh, it's a 1960s coat hanger, would you believe? I've had this for absolute years and I can't even remember buying this or where it came from. It's just been with me all my life. It just feels like that way anyway. So uh, I like this. It's good, isn't it? I could put it in front of me. Perhaps I'll get more viewers. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> okay, right. A few weeks ago, uh, I was just looking through Facebook. I don't, I'm not a big Facebook follower, but uh, I was reading a post by Danny Harrison, which is George's son, and he's telling us that they're making available all the recordings what were made on George's Dark Horse label, only for streaming. And then it just got me thinking then. I thought, oh yeah, I can remember Splinter. They were, I seem to like them, but I've never heard the album. I like the single, as far as it got really. They had a single in 74 called Costa Fine Town. And uh, so I sort of read up about the album, which is called The Place I Love. And George produced this one and starting in mid-73 running through to around about August 74 so quite a long period and uh, I thought I'm going to try and get that album because George is all over it <laughs> plays loads of instruments so and I did I managed to find it and this is the one Splinter the place I love it's got a bit of a bit of a gay fall going on I'll be a bit careful with these I don't always like I suppose people try and come up with something different, but something different doesn't always work. But it is in good nick. Uh, whoever had this before me has looked after it, which I'm grateful for. Uh, came with it as a lyric sheet. And the original sleeve and a sleeve. This was the first Dark Horse album. It's in nice condition, didn't pay a great lot for it, 10 quid I think, something like that, maybe a bit less. Uh, and they were discovered really by uh, Mal Evans. Mal Evans at the time was a talent scout for Apple, Apple Records, and uh, he told George about them. This would probably be 72-ish, uh, and George was interested in signing with Splinter. But as you know, Apple just sort of didn't work too good. So I suppose they were on the back burner a couple of times. I think they worked on a song with George with that Little Malcolm film, something like that, yeah. So then we fast forward to 73 and uh, Splinter Art recording the album with George in control as producer. This is Fire Park and the On Thames uh, studio. So, uh, yeah, so there's some damn fine musicians on this album. If you're familiar with uh, solo Beatles, you'll know the likes of Jim Counter on drums, Klaus Vorman, bass, Willie Weeks on bass also, Billy Preston, keyboards, Carrie Wright, keyboards, Alvin Lee is on the first and the last track. Alvin Lee was from 10 years after. Uh, George plays quite a few instruments. Acoustic guitars, dobro, harmonium, various percussion instruments, Moog synthesizer, electric guitar, slide guitar. Not too much slide actually, which is quite good really because it tends to be a bit overused sometimes. So maybe George is perhaps thinking, well, we'll have less slides, so the emphasis isn't too much on him. I don't know. But he does play some nice guitar licks, there's some nice, some nice playing on this album. Nice. Uh, he's just in the backing, you can hear him there. He's very good. I love, I love George Harrison as a guitar player. He's always, he's always been one of my favourite guitar players. He's, he's my favourite Beatle, really. Uh, I'm a big fan of George. So... Uh, George is, he is all over this album, you can tell. I think it's almost a George Harrison album. He took the two guys off to do the singing, which is uh, Bobby Purvis and Bill Elliott, 
and George could have sung all these songs and it would have been a George album easily. So uh, see, if you do like George Harrison, you'd possibly like that album, but even if you don't, you still might like it. It's a good folk, folk, soft rock, however you want to describe it. It's nice and gentle, easy going. It's, it's pretty good and the production is good. George Harrison really was a good producer. Uh, probably, yeah, I think he's probably the best out of the Beatles as uh, producing in them days anyway, I think. So, uh, but I suppose the downside to George working on this album is concurrently, I think it was all concurrently, he also produced this album for Rabbi Shankar, which is Shankar Family and Friends. This came out on the Dark Horse label in 1974. I'm presuming this was maybe the second, Splinter was the first album, I think this was the second Dark Horse album. Well George also worked on that Fet Music Festival for India as well. It was all around about the same time. And then his own album, Dark Horse, which was on Apple. So after all doing all that, he worked on this, what maybe doesn't put the same effort as he did on those two albums and the music festival in India, you know. So maybe this could have been a far better album. I don't know. This is a good album anyway, but uh, it's probably it's probably his least, my least favourite. I don't know really. Uh, but there are a few tracks I do like on that one. Anyway, I'm talking about George now, so the Splinter. So, <laughs> so the Splinter one. Uh, Say it's it's mainly mid-paced, slow paced, slow ballads, very slow, easy to listen to. It's sort of an easy album, if you know what I mean. You can relax and just listen to it. But I think the first track and the last track are a bit more up tempo. Uh, the last track, which is called Haven't Got Time. Uh, it's got Alvin Lee on that one. It's it sort of reminds me a little bit the vocals. I think it's just one vocalist. Don't know who, don't know who the main vocalists are on this, but it sounds like it's they're not really singing in harmony the same. And he's singing in like a upper register of his voice, and it's sort of reminding me of Paul McCartney. Uh, maybe. I'm trying to think of a song for an example. Perhaps uh, I've had enough from London Town. What was it London Town? I think it was London Town. Uh, so it's in that upper, or not screaming, we're almost there. And the backing track could have been something off Walls and Bridges by John Lennon. So I don't know, that, that's, that's just my ears. I don't know whether that's well, I'm strictly right, but it just put it sort of reminds you, it doesn't stick out like a, a sore thumb. It reminds it reminds you of something. And there was another track, I don't know which one it is now, uh, it's sort of reminding me in a, in a few seconds of it reminding me of calling occupants of interplanetary craft, which is made by Klaatu and then made famous by the Carpenters. Um, I think it's the Carpenter's version, I don't know. There's sort of a similarity in some of the harmony. Just for a few seconds, and it took me a few seconds to work out. I thought that does remind me of something. And I couldn't quite bring it forward into my mind, front of my mind, but it got there in the end. And uh, I think, yeah, it's a Klaatu song, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. So, uh, yeah, so there's a few Beatle, there's definitely a Beatle. A Beatle feeling on this one. So I think it's well worth checking out. I mean you can check the, the streaming services and you can listen to some of the individual tracks but this is the album that's called The Place I Love. Uh, and so I'm done I think. I don't know if I can add much more other than say I recommend this album and we shall now bid you farewell. Farewell for now. Another farewell from George. Say farewell, George. Farewell, George. <laughs> bye bye. You don't have to be mad to do a 
YouTube video, but it certainly helps.